Alright, so this is the second part of the video. Uh, so we're going to talk about attribution theories. And in this video, I'm going to explain uh, two different theories uh, corresponding to the idea how human, how individuals attributing others' behavior uh, and their own behavior as well, yeah, to certain causes uh, by using uh, correspondent inferences theory from Jones and Davis and also covariation model from Harold Kelly, yeah. So um, as I to as I told you before in the in the previous video that human uh, is basically uh, has some bias. They they have some bias. We have some bias uh, that because we prefer to uh, to seek for internal uh, attribution. Yeah, we we, we prefer to uh, to look for explanation that comes from uh, the actor themselves. Yeah, when they perform certain behavior and this theory concerns on that yeah the the uh, the idea of uh, the idea how uh, attribution processes works uh, as uh, when we seek for explanation about internal uh, causes of the behavior yeah so basically um, we tend to look for a uh, dispositional or traits yeah as the causes or as the explanation why certain behavior occurs so for example if sees if we see someone as being friendly to us when they are interacting with us then we tend to see uh when to, we tend to see that this person is a friendly person as the explanation why they are being friendly yeah rather than looking for another causes such as well, it's part of their job of being friendly, right? So we tend to see this. We tend to attribute uh, their behavior uh, because the beha uh, as the as as an outcome of their traits. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the um, a quite a, uh, a quite interesting explanation on how we attributing things. So why is that? Because as I told you before in the in the in the last video in the previous video, that uh, this this positional feature. Or the trait feature or the personality factor is a, is a stable factor. It's a stable explanation. So we'd like to uh, form a knowledge about other people that is stable and predictable, rather than using situational factor that is somehow uh, less predictable than this than the internal factor, and it increases our own our sense of having some control or uh, or. Uh, that we're able to predict our environment better yeah so yeah so that's so that's basically the the idea how uh, correspondence inference theory works so in order to make these inferences in order to come into this conclusion that there there, uh, there is a causal relationship between someone's traits or someone's characteristics with their own behavior with their behavior yeah so we rely on five sources of information so the correlation or the causal relationship between traits and also the behavior would be stronger if they fulfill uh, this five principle yeah so the first one would be if the behavior is freely chosen yeah then the behavior would uh, would describe the disposition or the traits better rather than the behavior that is not freely chosen so, for example, if you see a student, yeah, if you see a student, uh, they come to the campus, yeah, they come to the campus with uh, certain outfits. For example, they wear suits and tie to the campus, and it's of course it's um, it's completely uh, it's completely allowed to you're you're completely allowed to do that, yeah, and it's freely chosen behavior. No one actually imposed them, yeah, imposed them to. To use suits and tie to campus yeah uh, and it would be more indicative to the disposition it maybe you would uh, have the sense that uh, this person might have uh, uh, might have certain traits that that reflects uh, their uh, orderliness for example or they want to be well suited or they want to make good impression from uh, for, uh, uh, good impression to others or perhaps they just want to be looked as professional or something like that and no one imposed them no one actually pushed them or forced them to to wear suits and tie to the campus so it's freely chosen behavior so that's why it's easier for you to make inferences so it's easier for you to come uh, to come into conclusion that 
the behavior of wearing a uh, sit and tie would correspond to uh, to the trait of the the actor yeah or the characteristic of the actor and the second would be behavior with effects that are exclusive to that behavior so we 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 would say this the behavior that that has no uh, that has no uh, that has non common effect would tell us uh, would would tell us more about the disposition so for example if uh, someone comes to the campus yeah uh, then uh, if two people yeah two students come to the campus so the first one would wear uh, something like um, t shirts with color yeah and also jean uh, also maybe uh, jeans trousers yeah and then the other one would use uh, would wear something like uh, a t-shirt with jacket and also with uh, with uh, normal pants yeah it's of course this is common effect because these two choices they're the, the effect that uh, the effect the outcome of those behavior would not be so different yeah it's completely it's just it doesn't have any differences yeah you, I mean, if 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 someone, uh, if th those two students, we could see those different two different behaviors or two different choices of outfits, they have common effects. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you choose to wear what 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 you choose to wear between those two, because it produced a completely same effect. But if you compare two students, yeah, the first one would use would would use uh, would wear something like. Uh, t-shirt with collar and also uh, uh, jeans trouser for example and the other would use suits and tie and that would be completely different yeah so the effect from that behavior the outcome of those two choices of outfits would be extremely different so this is why we call it non-common effect yeah so if someone uh, if a student choose to use uh, suits and tie rather than just normal uh, uh, t-shirt with collar and also uh, jeans yep uh, uh, jeans trousers then of course the effect would be extremely different this is something that we call non-common effect so that if a student chooses to wear suits and tie to campus then of course it's easier for you to make inferences that 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 options that the student that the, the, the students chooses would reflect their personality would reflect their traits better yeah mm. and also uh the third one uh, would be the social the socially desirable behavior would tell you very little yeah very little about their disposition so for example if a student wears suits and tie but they you they wear it to wedding reception for example this is something that's socially desirable yeah the society expects you to well dressed when you come to a wedding reception yeah so it's really hard to make inferences when you choose suits and tie when you use it on where or when you wear it in a wedding reception because it's socially desirable behavior yeah but when the behavior is not socially desirable it tells you more about the uh, it tells you more about the traits or characteristics or personality of that actor yeah and the fourth one yeah the next one would be we will make we will be more confident in concluding that there has some relationship a causal uh, relationship between uh, certain behavior with the traits of the actor when the behavior has direct consequences on us yeah so when a student where uh, sits and tie to campus because they have a classes because this person he has a classes with you the, the similar classes with you then you would make an inferences that perhaps this boy the student this male student has some kind of uh motivation to impress you yeah as as his perhaps potential mating yeah i don't know so if it impacts us yeah it impacts us personally then we would be more confident in making the judgment in making the inferences about that behavior so this is why we call it uh, th this aspects is hedonic relevance because it's relevant it's relevant to us yeah so that's why it's very easy to us to be more confident in making the judgment and if the behavior is intended to of course yeah if, if it is intended to directly harm 
or benefit us then of course it's we have uh, there is a high personalism yeah and we make more uh, we, we we will make a more confident judgment uh, about the inferences of the behavior yeah i think it's fair it's still related to the to the first uh, to the uh, to the uh, previous concepts of hedonic relevance yeah so basically if it's it is intended to benefit you or on the other hand harm you personally then we will make the judgment more confidently yeah so this is the diagram uh, that explains how uh, we make inferences yeah based on five different sources of information or diff or five principle i would say <laughs> and we would easier and if the the information or the behavior fulfill those three those five uh, principle then it makes us even more confident in making the judgment that that behavior that those behavior those certain behavior comes as an effect of uh, internal traits of the actor yeah and this, the third theories that i'm going to explain is covariation model yeah, it's slightly more complex than naive psychology and also the correspondent inferences. Uh, so basically, we we um, we sh we agree that uh, behavior could not be uh, something that happened or something that is caused by only one particular factor. But we see that as the as a more complex phenomena. And we assess the possibility of the involvement of multiple factors at the same time that causes the behavior. So what we do here as, as a scientist-like processes, yeah, uh, we, we tend to, we, we, we assess multiple factors, multiple causes that potentially affect, that potentially, uh, that potentially uh, influence uh, uh, the occur, uh, the the appearance of certain behavior yeah so basically we try to connect the uh, connect uh, we try to match uh, we try to assess whether certain factors could provide explanation why certain behavior occurs and then we identify which factors that has strongest relation uh, with the behavior itself and when we then decide that that behavior should be uh, that uh, that causes should uh, or that factor should be the cause yeah should be the cause of this uh, particular behavior so uh, covariation model so Harold Kelly basically agreed with uh, Fritz Haider yeah so we basically it's a scientist like processes it's science like processes so we try to identify uh, the potential yeah the potential causes and then we try to seek uh, and when we then we try to decide which factor that is the cause the ultimate cause of the behavior yeah and then after assessing those causes uh, after assessing those potential causes then we can conclude whether that behavior is influenced by external or internal factors yeah okay so in order to make this decision we try to assess three different information uh, that relates to the behavior. So the first uh, one is that the behavior that we want to assess, that we want to seek for the explanation. Yeah, so the certain action. Uh, in this case, um, uh, I'm using angry, being angry, yeah, as the as the example. Yeah, so we're trying to look for information why Bu Amel is angry. Yeah, and by uh, it's a it's a it's a behavior that is performed by a specific actor that is Bu Amel. Yeah. And also the potential cause. Why Buamal is angry? Maybe it is caused by her daughter. Yeah. So we're trying to to look for uh, for uh, for information whether uh, her daughter, my daughter, yeah, would be the cause of I of me being angry. Yeah. So what we're going to do? What what we what we do usually is that we're looking for information consistency. So. Uh, does Bu Amel always get her daughter uh, get angry yeah, at her daughter uh, or perhaps only sometimes yeah perhaps only sometimes so what if the if Bu Amel is angry is always angry with with her daughter which uh, whose name is Ayesa 
and then we can say that we can we can conclude that the behavior is consistent yeah but if uh, if the behavior of being angry is only occur sometimes then we could we could say we could conclude that uh, it has a very low consistency because it's only sometimes yeah and the second would be the distinctiveness in Vermitian. So whether Bu Amel uh, get angry at everyone in, in her household or only at her daughter. Yeah, only exclusively at her daughter. So if I angry to anyone in my household, including her father as well, it means that my behavior has very low distinctiveness. But if I only get angry to my daughter, yeah, exclusively, then we could say that the behavior is is having a higher distinctiveness, yeah, higher aspects of distinctiveness. And the third one would be the consensus information, yeah. Uh, whether only Bu Amel get, gets angry to her daughter or, uh, or her husband or her spouse would also get angry to her daughter. Now, that's quite interesting. So if only Bu Amel exclusively angry to uh, angry at her daughter and with uh, a but uh, her spouse or her husband doesn't get angry at her daughter then we could say that it's 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 having low consensus but if both Bu Amel and also her husband gets angry to her daughter then we can say that being angry is a behavior that ha that has higher consensus yeah and based on those three information, then we could call, uh, we could uh, identify, yeah, whether being angry is something that happens, uh, something that comes from internal factor because Bu Amel can easily angry, yeah, or Bu Amel can get easily angry is a fuss, yeah, or even uh, the behavior of being angry is an effect of external causes maybe it is caused by her daughter yeah and so if the consistency is low Bu Amel only sometimes get angry uh, get angry at her daughter then we so, uh, that what we will do what we will do is that we're going to do discounting we're looking for other explanations so it, it's not it's not caused both by internal or external factors so we're going to look for another causes because it's the consistency is very low yeah but when the consistency is high Bu Amel is consistently get angry to her daughter and that the distinctiveness is high as well Bu Amel is only get angry exclusively to her daughter and then not only Bu Amel gets angry to her daughter but her her spouses or her husband her husband also angry to her daughter it means that the daughter is the cause. Yeah, the daughter is the cause of why Bu Amel is angry. Yeah, so we attribute the the, the behavior of of being angry as the effect or as the outcome of the daughter. Yeah, so the external factor would be uh, stronger in this case. Yeah, but when the, when the consistency is high, Bu Amel always get angry to her daughter, but then the distinctiveness is very low. It means that. Bu Amel gets angry to everyone in, in her household, not only to her daughter. And then when the, cons uh, the consensus is low as well, only Bu Amel, uh, who's who's, who, is on who is angry to her daughter and the husband does not, uh, does not do the same thing. And then you can conclude that Bu Amel is, is a person who can easily angry. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it relates to Bu Amel's personality who who is who can easily angry he's a bad tempered yeah ill tempered for example yeah so that's the um the basic concepts yeah the, the 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 basic description of how we can come into conclusion that certain behavior could come from external or internal factors yeah based on three different uh, sources of information uh, three different types of information i would say but of course, this theory has some limitations, yeah? Um, of course, if we only attribute, if we want to set up a causal relationship between a certain behavior and also the traits of the actor uh, based on assessing different types of factors at the same time, 
when or whether some whether some factors could explain why those behavior occurs then we are not a scientist we are a naive scientist because we know that when something could explain why behavior occurs it doesn't mean that they have that they have causal relationship yeah it's very naive saying that uh, something that explains something it means that those two phenomenon has causal relationship because covariation or correlation does not imply causation yeah so you need a very very strong proof very strong evidence to establish causal relationship it means that you need to isolate yeah isolate any other potential causes and in order to be very sure that those factor is the cause as the cause of certain behavior and it's almost impossible for us to do that and of course uh, this theory could be uh, ob uh, obscure in this case yeah it's very it's it's extremely impossible to to decide which uh, factor that cause uh, that, that could be the sole cause or the ultimate cause of certain behavior and also remember that we are a cognitive miser we don't have energy to to compile different information yeah different types of information when making some judgments so and it's impossible for us to to use or to to do multiple observation uh in order to make a better judgment <laughs> that's just impossible this not this is not something that we do all the time then it's naive yeah it's rather naive to to uh to assume that people could draw a causal relationship based on a very limited observation yeah so of course we're not scientists at all we're naive scientists yeah rather than the the, the true or the actual scientist and to solve this and sometimes uh before that and sometimes we prefer explanation that that in line with our expectation yeah as we uh, as we discussed last week yeah we tend to look for information that that uh, that's similar to our prior belief yeah sometimes we ignore data we ignore observation we, we ignore um, um, basically data that contradict our belief yeah we tend to look for um, we tend to look for uh, information that consistent to our prior belief yeah so if you have an impression or if you have a theory or if you have a belief that Bu Amel is a bad tempered person then you will pay more attention to the data to any kind of observation that conclude your belief yeah rather than seeing rather than assessing all available evidences yeah so that is why kelly proposes a slight modification to the to his theory and he said that basically well yeah we don't pay attention to ed, to all available evidences when making inferences so this is why we have something that we call causal schemata yeah I remember the the social schema that we talked last uh, week yeah so basically we, we we already have beliefs and preconception about uh, about about the behavior yeah from our experiences of course uh and of course we tr after we're doing observation after we observe that behavior we try to integrate the information that we that we obtain from that observation with our preconception that already exists in our mind yeah so uh, which is quite interesting we integrate uh, uh we integrate we count that we count our belief as one of the factor yeah that causes certain behavior but again this uh, <clears throat> um after uh, several studies it confirms that basically the concept of causal schemata it's really hard to to look for the evidences whether this uh this uh this phenomena exists yeah uh, so no one actually has a, an evidence of proof that causal schemata actually works in real life yeah so that would be the one of the drawbacks yeah the the the, the uh one of the major drawbacks of this theory right so that would be the end of the of the second part of this lecture we're going to continue to the third part of this lecture uh, by, talk, by, by discussing about emotional liability theory and also uh, self-perception theory and another theory that is related to task performance. So basically we attribute, and this is a process where we attribute someone's ability, yeah? 
someone's ability and their su uh, their success or their failure in completing uh, certain tasks right so thank you very much for watching